What are the Win and Win Tillerbolt factory settings? I'm going to answer this question so that way you can finally understand what they mean in the manual when they tell you how many turns in and how many turns out you can turn your tiller bolt in a safe range to make sure you don't damage your equipment or injure yourself. I can't tell you how many people have asked this on the internet and scratched their heads, myself included, what are the win and win tiller bolt factory settings? How do you even find them? How do I know that when I bought this bow, the tiller bolt hadn't changed from when somebody else had the bow previous to me? Because oftentimes I like to buy used equipment because it saves me money. So when win and win says from factory settings in and out, here's your range of how to adjust your tiller bolt. How do you figure that out? Well, I'm going to show you in this video here today. So I've got a win and win ATF X here. The reason I grabbed this bow is it's very easy to show you the maximum in and maximum out because you can actually see the side of the tiller bolt when the bow is strung, or at least you can because the pocket here is very, very small. So you can see a lot of the side of the limb where it is relative to the tiller bolt. The ATF DX, the Meta DX, and some of those other bows are a little bit harder and more tricky to actually see because of this little bridge that they've got here plus any of the other risers that are solid through there, it's very, very hard to see, but I still have some tricks that I'll show you on how to figure it out, even if you can't see the side of the tiller bolt. The reason that this is important is that you wanna protect the equipment, protect the riser, protect the tiller bolt, and you wanna protect yourself from any sort of injury. If you go outside of the recommended range, you can actually break things. You can break the tiller bolt. You can also break yourself. What I have actually heard that has happened, I've never seen it in person, but when and when has told me it has happened in the past, is that people will take their tiller bolts and go in much too far. It'll cause a crazy amount of stress on a particular part of the tiller bolt, and it has sheared off many different times. That's why on all of their new bows, the DX bows, the Meta DX, the ATF DX, they all have a integrated stop that allows the bolt to bottom out against the riser itself, and it stops it from going in too far. Other manufacturers also have this as a feature, like Hoyt. All the way in is a stop, and then they tell you you can take the tiller bolt out six turns from there. That's pretty easy to find out if you're a general consumer that have bought used equipment. That's a much easier way to figure that out. So the new tiller bolts that come in the DX bows have stops integrated into them. So there's not such a problem. If your bow does not have a factory recommended maximum in and maximum out, this is something to pay attention to. And if you have solid tiller bolts like are in the vast majority of bows, you'll be able to figure this out. The exception is the g -Lows, where the pocket pivots instead of the limb bolt just moving in and out, and also some of those pivoting head tiller bolts that used to come on Hoyt bows. So in order to do this, all you need is your limb and your riser and a tiller bolt, and you don't even need it to be strung. I don't know if I'll be able to show you properly over the bench how to preload the limb in the manner that the bow is when strung or at full draw. So I'm gonna show you now instead. So what you want to do is make sure that the bow, or the limb rather, is seated against the tiller bolt. In this position, you can see that there is a big gap there and it's not touching the tiller bolt. Well, when the bow is strung or at full draw, the limb bends this way, right, towards you, the archer. And so now it is seated against the tiller bolt surface itself. So when I make adjustments, I will make sure that I'm pulling down on the limb like this and essentially bending the limb in the manner that it would be when strung and then I'm going to check the tiller bolt itself. You can also have a piece of paper handy as well and of course your allen wrenches because both of those are some tools that we need. So I'm going to put the camera over the bench and explain to you exactly how to figure out the range of adjustment on win and win tiller bolts and any other bow out there that doesn't have a stop or a recommendation. All right so I've got a tiller bolt here and I've just started the threads and it's not going in in any amount, specific amount, or any particular amount. I'm just going to throw it in the bow, and we can take a look at it. As you can see, this is the new precision tiller bolt that I have for sale for Win and Wins. If you're interested in them, I will have links in the description below. You can go to my website, jkaminski.com, and I'll have a card at the top up there, just in case you want to grab a set. They are available for A and B type Win and Win risers, and they're available in both 375 and 380 size. Now what you will do is you'll take your limb and snap it into the bow. And as I said, make sure that you don't have a gap like this. You wanna pull the limb back and make it touch the surface of the tiller bolt. And you can see there's still a gap. So give it a little bit more force. Oh wait, maybe I'm out too far. So a really good way and a safe way 
to figure out if your limb bolt is out too far on a win and win bow is to do this with it unstrung and push it to see if it will touch the tiller bolt. And even if I take it off camera and I push on it as hard as I can, it's not moving anywhere. And you can see that there's a gap there that the bottom of that limb is not touching the tiller bolt even at all. And as I told you to have a piece of paper handy, just a regular piece of paper is fine. You can test it with it set in the position where you're trying to force it all the way out and see if you can fit a piece of paper in between the limb and the tiller bolt. And I still can. So that means I'm still not in to at least the maximum out position. So I'm gonna give it another quarter turn, pull on it, it moved. Let's see here. Again, this is kind of complicated. You might need to do two with two people, but now it's touching. So I can't fit the piece of paper in between the tiller bolt and the limb in this spot here where the tip of that limb is finally touching the tiller bolt. Each bow is slightly different and each bow has a certain amount of adjustment and movement in the pocket itself where the dovetail fitting fits inside of here. Some have more range and some have less range. Like a Hoyt has six turns in and out to be able to move. Excuse me, six turns out from maximum. So three in and three out. Win and win recommends two. So in general, that might be true for most win and wins. Some of them I've noticed I can do a little bit more out than others, but that's just between you and I. I won't make absolute recommendations. I don't know the specifics of this riser or your riser or any riser really. I just have a educated guess here and I'm sharing with you my experience. At least give a good quarter turn in past the first initial touch just to be safe. It's definitely a lot better to be safe than to be sorry and break your equipment or hurt yourself. So what this means is if I was a half a turn out from here, it would not touch. And that means when the bow is strung, all of the force is on the internal stuff here in the dovetail pocket area and none of the forces are being distributed onto that tiller bolt. And definitely you'd be looking at some limb failure or possibly some riser failure at some point in the near future. So I'm gonna go that half turn back. That's the maximum out. Again, use that piece of paper if you can't see it and check it. Again, it is in this location down towards where the end of the limb itself is. It is not in the far right portion here where you can see how I can slide this piece of paper easily between the tiller bolt and the flat surface of the limb itself. Okay, so that's all the way out. What about all the way in? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, let's say four turns, one, two, three, four, all right? And now, like I said before, make sure there's no gap like that, pull the limb down, and let's check to see if a piece of paper will fit from the top, and it won't. So right about four turns in on this ATF-X, it is essentially in the maximum in position. The maximum in position is, in my opinion, as important as maximum out because this is where the tiller bolts have sheared off in win and wins past. If you go in past this maximum in position, and I'm gonna take it to the very, very extreme for you here and go another one and a half turns, if we were to be able to see this, and it's gonna be tricky with how the camera is mounted, uh, boy, and the limitations of this actual riser, I'm gonna grab the ATF DX and see if maximum in will show us this a little bit better. Ah, yes, so this is much easier to see. So I'm gonna set this ATF aside because this ATF DX is a little bit easier to see. Now remember, the ATF DX comes with a factory stop, so it would prevent us from doing this. But you can see the side of the tiller bolt and the limb interface from this angle much easier because there's no riser in the way. And if I go past the maximum in setting, what we will find, and again, this is really a over example here. See how over here, the very outer edge of the tiller bolt is the only spot that's actually touching the flat surface of the limb. You'll see there's daylight everywhere else showing that just the outer edge of this tiller bolt here is touching the flat surface of the limb. What that's doing is it's putting an extreme load and extreme force on this tiller bolt head 
and it will shear off eventually, especially if it's made of aluminum. Obviously very dangerous. So when you look at the bow from the side like this, you can either use a piece of paper and I'll show you how and where to put it in a second. But as you're in the maximum in position, let me back this tiller bolt out. I can look from this angle and essentially, especially with a white background here, I can look for daylight between the tiller bolt and the limb surface. And as I see daylight towards the tip over here and still touching over on this side, I continue to go out. So I can see right now, no daylight. That means the flat side of the tiller head bolt, the underside of it, and the top side of the flat side of the limb are now perfectly in line and parallel together and are touching evenly. That is the absolute maximum in position. So it's very hard for me to show you here, but you can see that there's no daylight. But if I were to go a turn out, look how the outer edge near the outside diameter of the tiller head, you can see daylight there on the right side. That means I'm too far out. I'm not all the way in. I can turn this down until, let's see here. From my eye, I can see a little bit of daylight. I don't know if you can on camera, but because I can still see daylight with my eye, let's take this piece of paper, take the corner of it because it's easy and try to slip it under the limb bolt edge. And it's not able to go under. So at least that gap is less than the thickness of this piece of paper. If I take it out a little bit more, check it really quick. Now I can really obviously see daylight. So can you on camera, I believe, at least I can through the viewfinder. But if for whatever reason we couldn't see the side of the tiller bolt because it was fully closed in like it is on the Meta DX, take a piece of paper, tear off a little bit so I can actually get access to it. And you can see I can fit paper down in there. So that means I definitely have a gap. And so I'm not all the way in. And that's how you check it from either the side or using a piece of paper as a feeler gauge to see if you're in the maximum in tiller bolt position. Again, this isn't for every single bow, but it's a general guide for you to understand at least the maximum in and the maximum out where you start to lose surface contact. So if your bow has a different geometry in the dovetail pocket and is allowing it to go out much further than say three, four turns, what you'll want to do is make sure you're paying attention first to obviously the contact, because if it loses contact, that means you're obviously going out too far. But then the next thing would be, if you look at the actual end of the limb here and where it meets the top surface at that corner spot right there, you'll essentially want to make sure that it never crosses the center line of the bolt. So if you look at the bolt, you can even use this collet slot here as a kind of a reference. Use that as a pretend center line of the tiller bolt itself. You'll never want the limb tip to start to move past the center line of the bolt like this. You'll want to make sure it's at least staying inside of that and it's covering more than half of the tiller bolt. Eventually it will touch all the way, of course, but that center line there is your maximum out. Anything past that, and again, you're creating all sorts of crazy forces on the tiller bolt itself. You can risk damage to the tiller bolt and shearing the head off. You can also risk damage to the limb base itself and breaking the dovetail from snapping and or the actual limb from slipping out of the bow. You don't want those things to happen. And this is your rough guide on how to figure out your maximum in and maximum out tiller bolt position with the win and win risers and any other one that does not have specific recommendations in their manuals. Now, if you're interested in checking out these precision tiller bolts, please head to my website, jkaminski.com. They are currently available for sale. I ship worldwide. And if you wouldn't mind, if you haven't yet, do hit that subscription button and the notification bell down below. It genuinely helps this channel out. I can't thank my supporters enough. Consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below as well. Or consider donating some money towards some of the campaigns that I'm trying to raise money for, like a high-speed camera and some acoustic panels for the studio as well. Thank you.